things Brits say versus what they actually mean can be quite confusing. So stick around to find out more. Hey guys, it's Amanda. If you're new here, I'm an American who's lived in the UK for over 10 years. And I can tell you from experience that Brits don't always say what they mean, and it can be confusing. They aren't always direct, but I think that comes down to them always just wanting to be polite and never want to offend or be rude to anyone. So I thought it'd be fun to put together a list of common British phrases and what they actually mean in hopes it helps anyone traveling here or just to give my fellow Brits a laugh as this video isn't meant to be taken super serious. It's a bit of fun. And it's worth mentioning that many of these sayings are usually said sarcastically. Also, the meanings that I give you will not be 100% correct all of the time. These are just generalizations. And if my lovely British viewers have anything to add, please put it in the comments. Number one, not too bad. They could be heading to the hospital with half of their head falling off, and the response would still be, ah, oh, I'm not too bad. Because no one wants to make a fuss. It's just not the British way. Whereas many Americans I know would go into full detail about what happened, what's wrong, and, well, you just hear their whole life story, which isn't a criticism, as we're just culturally different in that way. Number two, just one pint, or just popping in for one. I've heard this one a few times since moving here, and I can confirm that it is never just one. Chances are, you'll see them about six hours later. Absolutely hammered. Number three, brilliant. Yes, it can mean the obvious, well done, or that's great. However, when said sarcastically, it takes on a different meaning. For instance, if you arrange a picnic and it starts pouring down rain, someone might say, oh, brilliant. They mean that's rubbish. It's crap. They're obviously not like, yes, I'm so glad it started raining for this picnic. I could have hoped for anything more. Number four, all due respect. If you're having an argument with someone and in the middle of it, they start the sentence with, all due respect, they are just politely saying they don't really care about what your point of view is, so let's just move on. Number five, Kraken. I know what you're thinking. Amanda, I know what Kraken means. Something is splitting or breaking like a coffee mug or a teacup. But I'm here to tell you, you're wrong. <laughs> if someone says, ah, oh, Kraken, it just means that's great news or they like the sound of what you're saying. For example, I just booked a holiday, so we're good to go. Oh, that's Kraken. Thanks, mate. Before we continue, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Since I've started YouTube, I've had many messages from you guys commenting on how great my setup looks and sounds, as well as asking me how I do it. And the short answer is Skillshare. I've taken classes on professional lighting, how to create professional videos, and video editing with Final Cut Pro Complete with Benjamin Hassal, which was the most helpful class that I've completed. It takes you through an entire edit from start to finish, and I can honestly say that it was a game changer. It helped take my videos to the next level. There are thousands of engaging classes to choose from, whether you're looking to start your own YouTube channel, learn how to grow your own veggies, or improve your photography, you should invest in yourself and your personal growth and make 2022 the best year yet. The first 1,000 of my viewers to sign up using my code Amanda Ray or my link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Number six, it's fine. So you've accidentally tracked a muddy footprints onto your friend's carpets and their response is, it's fine. Chances are they're irritated, but they're not going to say anything. Number seven, sorry. Of course, it could be that they're apologizing, or it could also mean that they couldn't hear what you just said. So could you please repeat it? Number eight, we'll see. If you ask someone to do something and they respond, we'll see, it's noncommittal. Chances are they don't really want to. <laughs> Number nine, five minutes away, or I'm just around the corner. They are miles away. Don't expect them in the next 15 minutes. Put on the kettle and have a nice cup of tea. Number 10. Fair enough. They probably disagree with what you're saying, but would rather not have the confrontation. Or 
they simply just don't want to talk about anymore. Number 11, I'll let you know. (laughs) They're probably not going to let you know. And they don't want to talk about anymore. So I'll probably just leave it at that. Number 12, it's all good. It's not all good. (laughs) They're probably a little bit irritated, but can't be asked with it. And probably by now, you might be picking up on a little theme here. And that is confrontation. Brits would just rather not have it, so they won't say anything. Number 13, forgive the mess. They've just spent the last three hours cleaning up. There is no mess at all. Number 14, I'd love to, but anytime those words are spoken, it's usually because they don't like the sound of whatever you're suggesting. Number 15, you've caught the sun. So you've had a lovely weekend out in the garden enjoying some drinks. And someone says, you've caught the sun. They just mean you're sunburnt. You look as red as a lobster. Number 16, whose round is it? They're not actually asking. It's a passive aggressive way of saying, it's your turn to buy the drinks. Number 17, really? Hmm. If you're in the middle of talking about something and that is the response, chances are they aren't interested in anything that you're saying and they don't really know how else to respond. Number 18, right? I better be getting off. In their head, they've been trying to form an escape plan for like the last half hour as they've had enough and they're ready to go home. Number 19, does anyone want to brew? Of course, they're offering to be nice, but in their head, they want everyone to say no. Or maybe that's just me. (laughs) I don't know. Number 20, I'll give you a call or we should meet up. You probably won't hear from them. They're just being polite. Chances are they would have made plans then and there if they really wanted to. But no one wants to say, "Mm, actually, I don't really want to meet up with you or really talk to you ever again. (laughs) So so they just say that. I mean, that's what I would do. Number 21. I'll bear that in mind. So you've offered advice and they have no intention of listening to it. Number 22. I hear what you're saying. They hear you, but they disagree with you. I hope you guys enjoyed that as much as I did. And again, I know I said it earlier, but this was just a bit of fun. And these meanings might not be 100% correct every time they're used. They're generalizations. But what do you think about my list? What would you add? Put them in the comments. And as always, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Smash that like button if that's what you're into. And I'll see you in the next video.